and when it comes to uh, federal prisons, I know that that number is, is much higher because of federal mandatory sentencing. This isn't a prison, this is a jail. The prisons are the country clubs. That's where some of these guys could end up, and I'm sure so. Anybody been to the Department of Corrections? Which one you like better, here, the jails or the state prison? What? See? These guys plead guilty quick so they can get to prison. I was raised believing that incarceration was expensive to the taxpayer. It was not in anyone's best interest to lock someone in a cage unless it was absolutely necessary. In the mid-1980s, a law was passed that allowed privately owned corporations to build and operate prisons. I'm a real advocate of private prisons, having privatized half the prisons in New Mexico. And the reason for doing that is, uh, is the same goods, same services at uh, a third less the price. Have we reached a point of building so many prisons that the purveyors are now looking for ways to keep them all full? Here's the way a private prison works, okay? You pay somebody to build a fancy cage. Then you fill it up as far as you can get it, which is pretty full. Full of people that the people that built the cage get paid forty or fifty thousand dollars a year to just keep in the cage. You have corporations like Wackenhut, you know, they just changed their name, Corrections Corporation of America, that house prisoners, nonviolent drug offenders. As a matter of fact, I think 60% of the increase in prison population under Bill Clinton, which was like a million people, of the 60% of that new prison population are nonviolent drug offenders. Now if you've got 5,000 people in your cage and you're being, you're being paid 30, 40,000 bucks a year for them. That's a lot of money. And if you can, on top of that, use them as your private property, as chattel property, that you can then make do work or make produce things that you get paid for on top of that. What a great deal. Now, where I come from, when you transform a person into a piece of property, that's called slavery. Not far from Bakersfield, California is a small town of Taft, once home to a thriving oil industry. But like so many oil towns across America, the oil finally dried up. Like many bankrupt towns, a private prison stepped in to save the day. The Taft Correctional Institution is owned by the GEO Group, formerly known as Wackenhut. Wackenhut changed its name after a storm of bad publicity. The GEO Group is the leader in providing diversified services to government agencies around the globe. Our global expertise in outsourcing includes the design, construction, financing, management, and operation of jails, prisons, and special purpose institutions, and immigration and detention centers. They trade their stock on Wall Street based upon the number of people that are in jail. If that isn't sick, if that isn't the best definition of sickness in a society, in a culture, in a civilization, I can't tell you what is. Serving time in the Taft Federal Prison is actor-comedian Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong. Trying to get into the privately owned prison to interview Tommy was not unlike dealing with any other major corporation. Months went by as they kept asking me to jump through endless hoops, and if I didn't know any better, I could swear they were doing everything possible to get rid of me. But Tommy wasn't just an icon of drugs. Sitting in prison, he was now a symbol of things to come with the new conservative fever sweeping the nation following 9-11. The transmitter on the ground truck. Uh -oh. You guys are from Texas? Are you? Yes. Austin, Texas. Austin. Oh, yeah. no wonder. <laughs> oh, Willie Town, huh? Tommy Chong arrested for pot, right? No. Tommy was targeted by former Attorney General John Ashcroft, whose Operation Pipe Dreams entrapped the 65 year old actor. Tommy's son was using his dad's face to sell bongs on the internet and was baited into shipping a glass pipe to a county that prohibits them. In his attempt to shut down the paraphernalia industry and send a message to Hollywood, John Ashcroft made an example out of Tommy, proving that even a rich movie star is not untouchable for the DEA. I'm Tommy Chong uh, of Cheech and Chong. It's like a royal title. The privatized prison business is, is big. It's a slave labor market. We get these little jobs and we work, we get like $15 a month, low end. It, it provides employment for depressed rural areas. 
So, so you get a place like CAF, you know. If it wasn't for the prison, there would be no, there would be no industry here. You know, the oil industry has gone long gone. There's nothing else here, you know, except uh, maybe the ground squirrel industry. Conviction rate is almost 100 percent. And people that are doing the longest time here are the ones that had a strategy, that went to court and fought it and lost. Step up to the waterfall. Good off, Paul Lance. J2. You know what it did? I'll tell you what it did. It, it made me feel like a black guy. Tulia was, for a long time, just another crummy little town in West Texas. And it's treated black people and Hispanic people in a real crummy way for a long time. It's not any different than towns throughout the South and probably in the Midwest. It's got a large church-going population. It's got a very uh, tight-knit community of white people. And it's got a small outside community that's not even really a community of marginalized black and brown people. I'm kind of the chief redneck out here because I am kind of prejudiced, and I admit it, and everybody is. Uh, you know, I'm not unique. I am unique in that I understand who I am and attempt to control that, which Christians are supposed to do. But any, any guy that puts his pants on one leg at a time and says he's not prejudiced, I say, come with me and I'll take you someplace and show you some people that you will be scared on your first impression. Civil rights attorney Jeff Blackburn witnessed how the lure of lucrative drug war funding enticed an entire police force to make illegal arrests. All of a sudden, overnight, there was this massive roundup, well publicized, all put all over the TV stations, where uh, one tenth of the town's black population was uh, escorted in handcuffs to jail. We were told that. This was the most massive rural drug conspiracy ever uncovered uh, in West Texas, that it was due to the sterling police work of an individual cop named Tom Coleman, who was a hero. The Tulia newspaper ran, not an editorial, I'm sorry, it was a news story that was headlined, Tulia Streets Cleared of Garbage. When all the major media sources, including 60 Minutes, covered the Tulia story, they told of a lone redneck cop by the name of Tom Coleman who hated black people. But who was Tom Coleman working for? When you follow the trail of money, he was merely a pawn of a law enforcement policy that profits from making large arrests. So there was this thunderclap arrest and sweep of the black community. I landed 46 people in jail, uh, nearly all of whom were black. Then, of course, they quickly started getting processed through the system with court-appointed lawyers, with all-white jurors, and we begin to get sentences like 99, 75, 320 years, out of control, over-the-top, Texas, typical small-town sentences for drug dealers. Yeah, I sat in jail for five months before my lawyer even came to see me. He told me, he said, only thing you can do for me uh, give me uh, 25 to 99. In the olden days, uh, you had legal lynching. This was, uh, this was legal lynching on a whole new level. This was ethnic cleansing uh, combined with the need to get grant money. The problem in Tulia and the problem with most of the task forces in the state of Texas, they're created as an entity, as a as a corporation that more or less stands alone. It's not in the chain of command of DPS or any state agency. It's tempting to think of Tulia as just some rural weird remnant of the distant Deep South past. The truth is, Tulia is the cutting edge of modern drug law enforcement. And you got this task force out here operating like a pit bulldog or a rottweiler that's supposed to be on kind of a leash, but it's running all over town trying to find any kid it can to bite. Yeah, I know I was single out because I was black, an old black guy. And the Spanish and the black, we, we in big, big trouble. 